Hi everyone, Amanda Saladin here from Love Life Yarn. Today we're going to be crocheting the velvet plaid blanket. I am in love with how this turned out. It looks great for fall decor. And using the clover tassel maker, added these awesome tassels to the end. I'll show you some great ways to style this blanket. And it's really not as hard as it looks with all the color changes. You can see here, you carry the yarns throughout the colors, so you don't have quite as many ends to weave in. I love it. I like to cuddle up in this thing. You can make it as big or as small as you want, and you will really love this velvet. I like the Bernat velvet. I've used it on several projects, and then I was a little nervous about it making good tassels, but I'm really happy with how these turned out as well, so that they get a little something extra on the ends. You ready to make this blanket? Let's get started. Materials you'll need for this project include three colors, of the brunette velvet. Check the written pattern for the number of skeins that you need. You will also need a large hook. This is um, my Clover Amour hook. Love these. They're really lightweight and easy to crochet with. This one you can see is the NP, which is a 10 millimeter. It's um, larger than what the yarn calls for, which I often do. I get a lot of questions about that. But I like to do a larger hook to give it a better drape. You will need also a yarn needle and some scissors. I like these clover patchwork scissors for mine. So that's all we need. Okay, for this size, I'm going to chain 65 in my main color. So I've already done that. I'm using the gray as the main color. It's going to be the most of the blanket. And now we're going to do single crochet in the second chain from the hook. One, two. I find with this yarn, I like to do it looking at the front of the stitches and just work into one. I'm really a big fan of working into the back loops, which you can also do. But I don't know why, but I found with this yarn, I like to work into the sides. So one, two. And if you've never single crocheted before, you will insert your hook, yarn over, so you catch this, pull it through, with two loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through both. And that is one single crochet. Then you go to the next, you can see kind of like the little hole right here. Same thing. Insert, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two. So you're just going to work all the way down your chain in single crochet. And you should end up with 64 stitches for this one. You can really make this blanket in any multiple of eight stitches plus one. So it can be as big or as small as you like. So I'm gonna work the rest of my chain and we'll come back and I'll show you how to start changing the colors. Okay, so now I have 64 single crochet on my chain and I'm ready to begin the chart. So the first thing we do with the chart is we work four single crochet. So you chain one here, always chain one at the end to raise it up to the level of our single crochet. Work into the hole. Make sure you go under both of these loops. And just do a single crochet the same way you did before. And we'll do four of these. Okay, now we do the last one. Stop right here where you have two loops on your hook. Put that yarn down. Grab your next color. For me, it's white. And you're going to hold it here and pull it through to finish off that stitch. Because you can see the stitch is finished off with this color, the main color, and now we're ready to work with the white. Now, the key to tapestry crochet is to keep this yarn, whatever yarn you're not using, caught in the stitches. So let's do four with our white. And you can see this strand is being held right here. This one's a little loose because it's the first one. What I do is after I do a stitch, I'll grab the tail, kind of pull it a little tighter to where it looks normal. Okay, now this we're still carrying this here. Just hold it right on top. It feels natural after you do it just a few times. 
just to carry that yarn there and it just kind of stays. Okay, there's three. And here, again, drop the color you were working with, finish out the stitch with the next color. See, this will loosen up a little bit. This will be an end that we weave in later. Okay, so now we'll hold, we'll carry our white yarn and do four or more. Occasionally you'll see this carried yarn. It's okay, I'd rather do that than have 5,000 ends to weave in. Okay, and again, switch colors. We've got our first part going on. So you can see, if you look closely, you can see a little bit of my white. It doesn't bother me. I said otherwise you have to do a different little, you know, strand of yarn for each square, and that would be so many ends to weave in. And I really want this look. I like the checkerboard, you know, the plaid or gingham, whatever you want to call it. I really wanted this look for this blanket. So I'm gonna deal with occasionally seeing my yarn. You would have to look really close and be looking for it. Okay, so there's two of the repeats. You can see it's eight stitches wide. So you're gonna keep working this way, catching that yarn in under here, always going over it. And you'll just keep single crocheting this way. After you do four rows, you'll switch and you'll do the black and the gray or whatever other color you're using. And then you will have to cut your white then. So after every four rows, you'll have an end to weave in, but it'll give us this nice checkerboard look. And I really love how it turned out. I hope you do too. Got a few rows now so that you can see how it's supposed to look. So on the edge, you don't have to worry about carrying the yarn on these because you just start out with the white and then your gray. So here's my gray ready to be picked up again. And you have your black. So you can, if you really look, you can see said the yarn's being carried, but I don't mind that look. And it beats weaving in all those ends, like I said before. So I just wanted to show you how it's coming along. Now this end, when I went to start my gray, I did have to carry it across because it was only the black. So I carried it across and then started here with the gray. And then my white, I added it in right here, my other end. So you just keep working the chart and single crocheting across and you just switch back and forth where you're gonna have four rows that are just white and gray and then four rows that are just gray and black. So like with this, I don't, I don't have any other color to worry about right here. So I'll just work across normally. And when you're doing the others, you would just work across the gray and then black would be next. Okay, now if you were doing like a right and a wrong side, you would always try to put this on the wrong side, but since I don't, I just leave it hanging and then I'll pull it up here when I'm ready to use it. Carry my yarn. And once you get the hang of it, it's really not bad to carry the yarn across. And you just get used to changing colors every four stitches. Where I'll drop one color, pick another, kind of give it a little tug to make it tight. Work across. After I do a couple stitches, I just give this a gentle tug too to make sure it's actually staying in there and it's not getting loose. And you just keep working through different colors. It's nice and soft. It's a great texture to it. 
Really, really enjoyed the velvet yarn. Making a great blanket. I also want to show you a trick in case you're having trouble with your yarns getting tangled. Mine were wrapping around and around each other like this, and it was a pain to have to keep undoing them every time. So keep your two colors separate, maybe one side or the other, or you could just put them kind of like even at this angle. My space isn't allowing me to do that in here. And my biggest problem was going from the gray to the white. Like I could just pick up the gray at the end of the white and it would be no problem. But when I got to the end here, they would start twisting. So then it's really annoying to have to stop what you're doing, and untwist it every so often. So right here I'm ready, but I have the white in front. So if I just pick it up and hook it, it's going to be crossed right here. Maybe a little closer. It's going to be crossed right here. That's what I was doing before. I would just pick it up and use it, and then it would twist. So now I bring the gray to the front, keeps that little twist right there, and now they're not twisted. See, it's nice and easy that way, but it took me quite a few rows to get this down where I was untwisting my yarns all the time. So let's go to the end of this section. Okay, and this one, if I leave my white back there, pick up my gray, it's just fine. Said so it's at the end, for me, it's at the end of the gray section. So let's work it one more time together. Oops. So if I mess that up, bring my white in here. There we go. Okay, on this stitch, this is the one that if I just pick this up, it would cross. So pull it to the front, pull it tight, pull it through, and keep working. And then you have these separate and not tangling so you don't have to stop all the time and untangle your yarn just so they just wrap around and around and around each other. So that will help out. If you're having that trouble, just make sure to pull the yarn to the front if it's causing you problems, and then you shouldn't have any more tangling issues. Okay, now we're ready to make our tassels. I'm using the Clover Tassel Maker. This is the largest one. You adjust the size by unscrewing these, and they can slide down to make it smaller or larger. Okay, like this, and I have set mine up to the, the largest, so I'm going to the tallest. And you just screw these down. And I made my tassels in the black velvet, so I'm going to be demonstrating that here. So to begin, you wrap it around one of the screws, and then you bring it through this little notch right here. And you wrap it around the frame. I wrapped mine ten times with the velvet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now, because this yarn is so thick, that's why I only did ten. If you're doing a thinner yarn, you'll need to, of course, wrap it more if you want a full tassel and then you put it through the other side and you hold it in place here. Now you need to get your scissors and cut it off and then you're going to need to cut another string that you can tie around the middle. So right here, near where the screws are, I'm going to tie it.
And I did mine three times just to make sure. So this will hold it in place nicely. Okay, got it tied right there in the middle. And now you don't really need these anymore, so you can let them go. I like to bring mine down here to this level and hold it. Now this nice groove right here is going to allow you to cut Make sure you're holding it here because the top will want to come off and you got to cut the top as well. So hold the top. And we're going to also cut across the top. Okay, some nice sharp scissors will help here. These are the Clover Patchwork scissors. Any sharp scissors will do. I like these because how sharp they are and how quickly they can cut through the yarn. I was using some other scissors that were a struggle and instead I've started using these and they're small and they can fit over here with my stuff that I keep on hand for my videos. Okay, here we go. Got this. This velvet yarn does shed a little when you cut it. So but you got right here where we tied the middle. I have this extra long piece right here. What I like to do with it is to cut it off and use it to tie so that I don't have to cut an extra piece of yarn. So here we go, right in the middle. And you decide how big you want the head of it to be. Do you want it to be down kind of far? You can, you know, put it down here. You can, we'll trim these up in just a minute. So decide where you want the head of it to be. Take your piece of yarn. And I like to wrap it around. go and now you tie it and again I only did this one two times I didn't feel like it was quite as necessary okay and then these pieces can hang down and then you're gonna trim them up I didn't do it there you can what they recommend on the instructions is to use a piece of paper and roll it up and put this in and then you could cut them all evenly at the end. I don't do that honestly for this. I didn't mind it being a little uneven at the bottom. So I just trimmed off the ones that were the longest or that bothered me because with this velvet, I don't think it's possible to get a truly, you know, straight tassel. So I'll just go through and trim off the end. So just trim it up till it looks nice to you. Or you could do what they said, then roll a piece of paper. If you get the tassel maker, it comes with instructions for that. And it has a nice picture for how to make the ends perfectly even. So there's my tassel and all my ends here. Let's get rid of those. When attaching your tassel, you'll need to cut another length of yarn and get you a yarn needle out. Go ahead and thread it through. And here's the corner that I'm going to work. I did not put a border on this blanket. I actually liked it like it was. I feel free to do a single crochet border or anything that you like if you like that look better. But I liked just having the plain border here and then. Here's my tassel. So there's, it's hard to see because I know it's black, but there's the string that I originally tied it with. I'm gonna go underneath that. And then get rid of here. Okay, I'll go back in here. I'm just gonna go around a few times. Okay, through the blanket, which is our gray here, and through the head of the tassel. Then what I did to give it a little more definition was I actually wrapped it around right here. Oops, so the end's getting in the way. I wrapped it around, and you could do that the other end as well. 
if you like, because I felt like this gave it a little more definition from the body of the blanket. Just make sure your other color doesn't show through. So if you need to wrap it a few times, see how it's starting to poke through, I would just cover that up. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. And I, the reason the way that I kind of finish off my ends here, I just pulled it down through the head and then trimmed it off to be the same. And then I thread it through the other side. And did the same thing. I finished up wrapping it. All right, that looks pretty good to me. And then I went down through here. And you can see that gives it a little, a little bit more definition having this little head. You don't have to do that, of course. You can just sew it on. But that's what I did with it. And then I trimmed it off. And that way we don't need any ends to weave in. And we've already woven in all the ends of our blanket. And so it is ready. This is a nice, easy one. If you have a little one a little loose like that, you can find it by just pulling on some of the other strands, which I don't know where this one is, but I would just keep trying until I found the one that this was attached to. Sometimes it's easier if you pull on a little bit. Oh, see, that one moved, so it's this one. I can kind of even out my tassel there. Because the velvet sometimes gets a little loose when you're tying this. But that is it. This blanket is finished. But I really enjoy this blanket and how it turned out. And I love having it lying around for fall and cuddling up with it. It's really nice. I never dreamt that I would like the velvet blanket or velvet yarn so much. I remember when I first saw it come out, I was like, oh, I'm not going to jump on that bandwagon because I thought it was such a fad and it would be gone. And then when Christian and I were out at Joanne, he was like, oh, mom, this is so soft. And he was like hugging on one of the skeins. And I was like, all right, let me see that. And I was like, oh, that is really nice. And then when I saw they had a teal, which is my favorite color, we picked it up, made a sweater, and I made some mittens out of it. And I really, really like the velvet. So I hope you enjoy your blanket. If you like this video, you'll love my other blanket videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Come visit us at lovelifeyarn.com where you'll find more than 100 free patterns. Special thanks to Clover USA for sponsoring this post with their tassel maker. See you next time. Thanks for watching.